Hi everyone and welcome to the Computer Science Department at Trinity Sixth Form Academy in Halifax. In this quick video I'm going to tell you a little bit about the department, a little bit about computer science as an A-level and we're going to complete a small programming task too. So why would you want to study computer science in the first place? It's awesome. Well, yes, I think so and so do many others. It's a challenging and endlessly fascinating subject that can take you in many directions. There are lots of choices at university too for you if you have a computer science A-level. And we're not just talking about computing but the A-level is well recognised by other degree level subjects as being an indicator of your suitability to study at university on lots of different courses. Now, in a way, school, sixth form and university are all preparing you for a career at some point in the future. Whether you go straight into a job after sixth form or to university, many employers will see a computer science A-level as a great addition to your CV, not just computing industry jobs either. It's the future. Well, we've put that one at the bottom. Not exactly, but if you could choose one subject that helps prepare you for the te technological advances to come, computer science would probably be it. So what computer science university courses are available? Well, I've put a very small handful there and I've deliberately left some blanks at the bottom because there are many out there these days, many more than when I was at university. Uh, so there are dozens of computer science based courses in total. These range from pure computer science degrees like I did to ones that add things like cyber security artificial intelligence and games development. Um, lots of them combine different areas. You can do ones that combine maths as well nowadays. Many, many different variations on the same theme. They all have computer science at the heart though. Get Googling, find out more, see what you can find out there. So what jobs are available? The list is very long and you can see some on the presentation, but again, you're not restricted to jobs in computing. It's a well-recognized qualification across many industries. There are a sample there, but yeah, lots and lots more out there. Lots of variations around programming, so software engineering, programmers, web developers, then there's the IT industry generally and support, working on servers, many jobs just in what we call IT. Cybersecurity is a big one now. There are not enough cybersecurity experts in this country or any other country. It's a massive growing sector. Video games, again, not enough video games programmers. And you might think, well, isn't that just in America or something like that? No, it's in this country. There are some huge video games makers in this country crying out for people like you who can work on video games. Data analysis, we're getting into more technical scientific jobs there. Many, many out there. Again, have a Google, see what you can find. So why study computer science at Trinity Sixth Form Academy? There are many reasons, but some that spring to mind that are specific to computer science, because I know the prospectus will tell you all the wide ranging ideas about the college, but specific to computer science, we could say the facilities. It's a brand new building and we have four dedicated ICT classrooms, in addition to other computer facilities throughout the building. The computer science classroom itself has specific software that's set up to help you get the best out of the course. The teaching staff are all highly experienced, of course, and good at what they do, which is helping you gain the qualifications you want. Personally, I'm a computer science teacher. 
and I studied computer science at school, then college, then I completed a computer science degree at university. I then went on to work in the industry for a number of years, mainly in web development and e-commerce before becoming a specialist computer science teacher. Now that's not me just showing off, that's me saying I believe this helps me understand where you are now and what it takes to help you get to where you want to be in the future. And I have a lot of experience in terms of getting jobs and the industry generally. Lastly, I should mention the students you'll be sharing the class with, really important. Computer science classrooms are always great fun and they involve lots of teamwork. This leads to great friendships being built along the way. I know my year 12s often start off a little bit shy amongst each other, very, very quickly, they all get to know each other. By year 13, it's like they've been friends all their lives and they really spend a lot of time working as teams on the particular problems that we put in front of them. What will I study? So the course we run is the OCR specification H446A level. It's made up of three different components. Component one is titled Computer Systems. The internal workings of the CPU, data exchange, software development, data types and legal and ethical issues is how OCR describe it, briefly speaking. Um, so this component makes up the bulk of the theory work and takes up most of year 12 to get through in the way that we teach it. Have a look at the OCR specification for detailed information on that. Component two then, algorithms and programming. Using computational thinking to solve problems. In this component, we look at the theory behind computer programming. So not just the programming itself, but the methods computer programmers use to build robust software. This is where we learn to think like a programmer. Component three is titled Programming Project. And OCR say students will be expected to analyze a problem and design, de develop and test and evaluate and document a program. The program to solve it must be written in a suitable programming language. We start this component towards the end of year 12 when you've had the chance to learn some programming skills. In fact, by the end of year 12, every single one of you on the course will have fairly extensive programming skills. I'm very passionate about that. Uh, the specification says that you can develop any type of software. So it could be something fairly boring like a database system for a company which if you went to a different college, you might be doing something like that. We develop video games because we love video games. We know you love video games generally, and we think, we think they're great and really interesting. So this is very much encouraged by OCR, and they actually write about it in their specification, as they know how engaging video games are for students, and they also appreciate the technical skills required. What programming languages will we use? Programming is at the heart of any course of study in computer science, no matter what the level. If you're doing it at GCSE, you're doing it at A-level, you're doing it at university. It's all about computer programming in its essence, at its heart. So we take it seriously as it's a very usable skill in many aspects, aspects of the A-level. It's also great fun and tends to be the most popular part of what we do. You will start programming in week one and you won't stop, essentially for two years. Our main programming language is C Sharp. This is a Microsoft designed programming language that is popular throughout industry. Lots of jobs available. It's a great language anyway, but even more important to us as it fits in with our video game development. We also look at JavaScript as it's popular in the exams 
and helps us with the development, sorry, with the web development unit, where we also encounter HTML and CSS. HTML and CSS are not, in fact, programming languages, but we often talk about them in that way. Lastly, we look at assembly language, but on a fairly small scale. We don't do a lot with assembly language. So I need to know how to program before I start the course. No, you certainly don't. You definitely don't need to know programming before you start the course. We will teach you from a complete beginner's level. If you have experience with C Sharp or another language, that's great, but it's not necessary. Our job is to get you all by the end of year 12 to the same point, to the same skill level at that stage. Okay, so here we have an image of Replit. We call it Replit, it's R-E-P-L dot I-T. Pronounced Replit, it's a website that provides an amazing platform for computer programmers in many languages. There are too many languages for me to even know. There are dozens of them on there. Although we also have programming software in class, we use Replit as it has some great features such as giving you the ability to program from anywhere, even on your mobile phone if you wanted to. Check it out please and feel free to set up a free account, it's great. So how do we build video games? We use a piece of software called Unity, which is also known as a game engine. All modern video games are developed using game engines. The game engine provides tons and tons of common video game functionality and allows you to create games without having to start from scratch each time. So you are not reinventing the wheel every time you start a new video game. You use the game engine's physics and all the built-in assets, um, background images, lots and lots of things. Unity is one of the most widely used game engines in the world. Recent titles created by Unity include Fall Guys on the left hand side there and Mario Kart Tour on the right, but thousands of games have been created with it. And there's a good chance you will have played some. Those professionally built games we just looked at are amazing but your game will likely be at a more modest level, such as the one shown here. Even this would be quite tricky for you as beginners, but it's certainly possible lots of our students do manage this level of game. Alright, so now we're going to do a really basic bit of programming to give you a feel for the C-sharp programming language. What you have to do here is use your imagination and think about the screen in front of you being a piece of programming software. So the grey box on the left will be our editor or where we type our code. The black box on the right is called the console. This is where we see the output from our programs. Type in some input if asked to do so and we'll also see error reports if we do something wrong. Now, for decades, computer programs, programmers have used a classic computer program to demonstrate a new language, which is called Hello World. It's very simple and just involves printing Hello World to the console window. The grey text at the top of the screen and the curly brackets near the bottom is required to make the program run correctly. We're not going to talk about that here. We will do on the course, but just concentrate on the text in the middle. So to print something to the console in C Sharp, we need to tell it that we want to do something with the console first. So we write the words console. The instruction we add to that is write line. 
So we have console.writeLine. C Sharp then knows something is being written to the console output window. We then have open and closing brackets with open and closing quotation marks in between them. Whatever we write in between the quotes will be what gets printed in the console. One other very important thing to tell the compiler that the end of the line has been reached, we need to add a semicolon. That's the same for many other programming languages. So if we hit our imaginary run button in our imaginary editor and hello world should be displayed in our console window on the right. And there it is, our program worked. So now let's say we want to add some user interaction. We want some feedback. We want to ask questions, the user inputs something and we give a reply based on their input. We'll change our previous code slightly to ask what's your name. When we hit run, that will be printed in our console. So if you look carefully, the code is exactly the same. All we've changed is the text that we're wanting to print out, which becomes what's your name with a question mark. We can then answer the question by typing in a name into the console window, so that's the black window, and hitting return on our computer keyboard. Here we've typed in a name, Alan Turing. Great, but nothing happens beyond that. What we need to do now is take that inputted name and do something useful with it. So we write the next line of code. Now this takes a little bit of working out and if we were in a class we would look at it in much more detail. I'm going to try my best here. This line is using console.readLine this time. So we're not talking about console.readLine as we are on the line above. It is, oh sorry, right line. It is console.readLine on this one. What this does is capture the input from the line above console.writeLine. To make this into something we can use in the rest of our program, we assign it to a variable. So we are taking the input, which in this case is Alan Turing, and we are assign it, assigning it to a variable. For now, you can think of a variable as a piece, or sorry, a place in memory where data is stored and it needs an identification. As we're taking the input of a name, it makes sense to call our variable name. And on the beginning of the line, we have to specify a data type for the new variable. Because the input is a group of letters, we specify the data type string. We'll talk a lot more about data types and variables on the course. Please remember this is just a brief little overview of C Sharp and how it works. So we've taken the input and we've assigned it to our variable name. What now? Let's say hi. On the final line, we're doing a console.writeLine again, but it looks a little bit different now. What we want to write is hi, then the inputted name, and finish off with an exclamation mark. The first bit is easy, we put hi in the quotation marks, which is exactly like we've done on the top line here, what's your name? Then we want to add the inputted name, and this is where our variable name comes in. We simply use a plus sign after hi, and then put the variable name after that. We could leave it at that, but we want to be a bit more adventurous here. So we want to add an exclamation mark on the end. So we add another plus sign followed by an exclamation mark wrapped in the quotation marks. Just have a careful look at what we've done there. So we have quotation marks, then a plus sign, then our variable name, then a plus sign, then more quotation marks and the bits that we want to print out in addition to the name within the, those quotation marks. 
So when we hit run now, it should print out our greeting. Now the process of joining things together like this is called concatenation. And those are the keywords that we have just looked at. So we've looked at variable, data type and concatenation. Now it's your turn. Create a free account at Replit. So that's R-E-P-L dot I-T. Stick that into your web browser and set up a free account. Start a new REPL using C Sharp. So it will say, what programming language do you want to use for your new REPL? Any new programming script that you write in Replit is called a REPL. So you choose to do it in C Sharp and then you will be able to use a sort of code that we have just shown you. Recreate our program, but add new questions too. So we're going to say, what's your name? Yep, we've already done that. So you should be able to just copy the code that we've already done. Where do you live? How old are you? And then we want you to output the answers all in one sentence, just like the output on the screen. Hi, Grace Hopper, you live in Halifax and you're 16 years old. What you'll need to do is use different variables for each input and bring it all together using your new concatenation skills. Last of all today, we have some bonus challenges. Find out who Alan Turing was. Find out who Grace Hopper was. Try to install Unity if your computer is capable. Remember, Unity is the game engine. If you've got a computer that is capable of it, as long as it's not many years old, you should be okay. You can have massive fun with Unity. Check out Unity Learn. Stacked full of tutorials that will get you through the early stages of developing your own uh, video games very, very quickly. All right, that's it. So thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions about the course, please contact the college who can put you in touch with me. Hopefully next time I speak to you, you'll be sat in my class in September. Thanks everyone.